Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Assebi, and today we're going to talk about the application rules you need to know about for Barclays cards. But first, if you are new here, we're all about how to maximize the value of your credit cards, so basically how to get the most cash back, and also how to travel for free. If that sounds interesting, then subscribe to our channel, but let's get started. Again, if you're looking to apply for a card like the Uber card or the Rival Plus card, this is the video for you. The first thing you need to know is that there isn't really any hard rule. With Chase, you have the 524 rule. With Amex, you have once in a lifetime. Even City has kind of the 1 in 24 rule. Here in Barclays, all you really need to worry about is that you don't currently have the card. On a similar note, there is not a maximum number of cards you can have. So with Amex, you can typically only get 4 to 5 of their credit cards, not counting charge cards. Here, again, there's no rule. One thing to be aware of though is that if you do currently have Barclays cards and you don't really use them, getting approved for a new card from them is probably going to be very difficult. Their main rationale is that you currently have one of our cards and we don't see much spend on it, why would we issue you a new card? Obviously it's still possible based off your credit score and based off your income, but again if you do want to apply for a new card and you already have one, my recommendation would be to take it out of the sock drawer and do some spend on it for at least one month. On the day that you're looking to apply for the card, if there are two cards that you're interested in, one thing you can do is to apply for both on the same day, that way they'll be combined into one hard inquiry. From reading different data points, it looks like you can do this with up to three cards, but again, I think anything more than two cards is going to be very difficult, so if I was in your situation and I was considering two different cards, I'd probably only do two. Again, your credit score, your income, as well as whether you have any Barclays cards already will probably play a big role. If you're deciding between which version of the card to get, one thing to be aware of is that most of these cards have a version that has no annual fee. This means that you can apply for the card that has the annual fee, that has the higher sign-up bonus, and then in year two, if you start to get negative expected value, instead of having to cancel the card, and that kind of hurts you in the long term for your credit score, what you can do is to downgrade the annual fee card to the no annual fee version. Again, for me, I'm really not a fan of canceling cards, especially ones that have downgrade options, just because in the long term it's going to hurt your credit score. For most credit card applications, they typically pull TransUnion, which is pretty good depending on where you're located and who Chase and Amex typically pulls. For me in California, this is really awesome just because, again, most of the other issuers don't pull TransUnion, so it looks really lopsided. Once you get approved for the card, you have 90 days to hit the minimum spend. This 90 day figure is based off the date that you're approved and not the date that you get the card. This is typical of most other issuers and a lot of people don't seem to be aware of this rule. So again, if you want to play it safe, my recommendation would be to base it off the date that you applied for the card in case that you got approved and you didn't realize it. I've heard way too many horror stories where people were short maybe $20 because they kind of mistimed it, meaning that they lost out on maybe $500 in value just because of a little mistake. If you apply for a card and you realize that you can't hit the minimum spend, maybe something happened in your life or maybe that big purchase that you had coming up got cancelled, what you can do is to cancel the card as long as you do it within 60 days of the approval date, you're going to get a full refund on the annual fee. You're still going to get that negative ramification from getting the card, so that hard inquiry, but again I think it still makes sense for some people, especially if you're not looking to get positive expected value from the card, why pay $100 for it? The final thing we're going to talk about is minimum spend and sign-up bonuses. So depending on whether the card is issued by Barclays directly or whether it's a co-branded card, the bonus will post at a different time. If it's issued by Barclays directly, you're going to get the bonus right after you hit the minimum spend. You do typically have to wait a few days for that final transaction to post correctly, but again, typically two to three days. For example, if you apply for a card and you hit the minimum spend after 15 days because you had a big transaction, then you're typically going to probably get that bonus on about day 18 or so. On the other hand, for co-branded cards, you have to wait until the statement, and again, there might be a few days afterwards before it actually posts. So again, let's say you hit the bonus on the 15th, on the 15th day of getting the card, you're going to have to wait until the first statement, which is typically one month out. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what's been your experience applying for Barclays cards? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.